What's going on, people? Thank you for joining me, the Beer Monster, for another beer review. It's Beer Monster O'Clock. So, what have we got today? Well, today I'm going to be reviewing Go Ship on the Perfect Draft by the Adnams Southworld Brewery. Uh, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna review it on the Perfect Draft first, and then I'm gonna put it up against the bottled version. I'll try the bottled version after. And just sort of compare the look of them and stuff and the taste of them and just see whether it's actually worth getting on the perfect draft or not that's that's the main idea in this video but of course to review the beer itself because i've not reviewed it on the channel uh price wise um oh yeah they're both 4.5 percent abv the bottle was a 500 ml bottle and it cost me two quid in asda but also part of the four for free deal where you can mix and match the perfect draft keg cost me 30 pounds at the time of buying <coughs> Excuse me, which works out to two pounds twenty three a pint, but you're getting a bit more in a pint than the five hundred mil. So price wise, very close, but I believe it was fifteen or twenty percent off at the time I bought it. Uh, you know, but buy it on offer, and it really isn't that much more expensive. But proof's in the pudding. Let's get them poured and uh, see if it's actually better on the perfect draft or not. Let me know what you think of Ghost Ship if you've tried it. It's very popular. I think most of you would have. You may have noticed I'm using Foster's glasses. I'm not a fan of Foster's, but they're two identical glasses to make it fair, you know? Right. Oh, she's giving good head. She is giving some cracking head on the perfect draft. Um, I had some a couple of pints of this a few nights ago. Um, I found it quite Moorish, actually. Um, right, let's get it. Well, obviously I've not reviewed it yet. Let's get the bottle version out. Mm. Let's see what it's like. I've tried this on tap as well, and it is, you know, it's a pretty good beer. I think most people would have tried it. There we go. How are we looking on the perfect jar for <laughs> Okay, that would do. Bush. Bit of carbonation stickage. Right, beers in the glasses. This one being the perfect draft, this one being the bottled version. What are we getting? What differences am I detecting? I am detecting that the bubbles are smaller on the perfect draft version. You may or may not be able to pick that up on your screens. Bubbles are smaller on the perfect draft version without any shadow of a doubt. Um, heads look very similar. Obviously, there's a bigger head on the perfect draft. The bottled version is definitely more carbonated though. There's more, well, there's bigger bubbles and there's more of them. Uh, Colour wise, very, very similar. Are they the same? Mm, I'm going to say the perfect draft one. It's just a touch darker and it looks slightly hazy on the perfect draft in comparison. And the head on the bottled version of the ghost ship is white. And where's the head on the perfect draft version? It's just a slight off white for me. Very, very similar though. Um, but you're getting a bit of lacing on the old perfect draft one, as you can see on top of the glass there. So yeah, small differences. Anyway, so let's get the nose in there and check out the aromas of Adnam's ghost ship. We'll start with a perfect draft one. Instant grapefruit, hoppiness, lemon, slightly floral, floral is, yeah, I'll go floral, slightly floral. Main thing for me is definitely citrus, um, does use the citra hop, you know, so that's to be expected. Grapefruit and lemon for me. Main standout is a grapefruit. Subtle bit of malt. Let's see if it smells the same out of the bottle. Very, very similar. Again, grapefruit, the standout of the bottle. Floral again. To be honest, they smell pretty much identical. Though perhaps the grapefruit on the bottle, I mean, this could just be me. It's quite hard when you go back and forward. It smells more like a, of a pink grapefruit. 
like a slightly sweeter grapefruit, but then that could be a bit of the malt coming through, perhaps. I don't know, I'm just saying, I'm just saying what I sniff. Anyway, let's uh, try the one on the Perfect Draft. Give that a review, boys. And then I'll just give the other one a go and let you know whether it's better or not. Cheers, everybody. Bash. Do let me know your thoughts on the, this on the Perfect Draft, if you tried it or out of a bottle, keg or whatnot. Cheers, peeps. Quite a smooth mouth, be all. It's um, it's a very session. The first impression is just a very sessionable beer. Um, four point five percent. It's very sessionable. It's quite flavoursome for the four point five percent, but easy drinking at the same time. The flavours aren't too intense where you're going to get sick of them. You know, predominantly. It's a citrusy beer, um, but it's not like full on in your face citrusy. I mean, for me, the citrus is at the front, I think. Yeah, it just goes straight in there with citrus, straight, straight out the gates. It's like a a blend of like a mixture of citrus fruits for me. Grapefruit probably being the standout, but more subtly, a little bit of lemon and lime in there as well, and a bit of zest. Grapefruit zest, I think, which is giving off a bitterness. It's like a grapefruity sort of bitterness, you know. And then subtly in the background, there's like a like a kind of malty caramel malt that just sort of is present throughout the tasting process for me it's nice there's something quite old-fashioned about this actually tasting but in a good way very traditional tasting palau um sort of the, the citrus does kind of coat the taste buds, giving quite a Moorish, a Moorish sort of linger to the beer. Um, yeah, it, it's it's decent. <sighs> Subtle spice. It's it's a decent beer, but uh, how do you put it? I just think there's better kegs available on the perfect draft, like, you know, the German stuff and all that, and some of the more crafty things I've, I've not tried yet, I'm expecting to probably be better. It's the same kind of price as, you know, <clears throat> a German lager and things like that. So it's, you know, while it's, it's good for what it is, a parallel, let's just say it's a decent, but not an amazing beer. You know, as far as the perfect draft version of this goes, of course, I'm not trying this version yet. I'll give it an 8 out of 10. It's a good beer, but because the competition is so strong in the perfect draft, there's so many good beers I've tried already. It just leaves me slightly underwhelmed. It's not quite got that bosh factor that some of the other kegs gave me. You know, the nipples are not quite aroused. They're only semi, but... You know, it's still decent, but for me, not a keg I would pay it for what bang for. You know, I've got 20% off, fair enough. You know, I've, I would I would buy it again if it was a short dated one, going a bit cheap, or it's like 30% off or something. But it's definitely not a sort of go-to keg, in my opinion anyway, for me. However, if you're looking for a very sessionable, easy drinking beer, look no further for me. Now let's try the bottle version, just to see whether I believe it's better on the perfect draft or not. Right, cheers everybody. Bash. Oh, by the way, Ghost Ship started off as a Halloween only beer. And it's named after like a really haunted pub, I believe. But you know, due to the popularity, they just made it available all year round. Right.
Oh, interesting. Right, it's definitely smoother on the perfect draft, the math feel. For me. But is it better? I'm not sure it is, you know. Which again, you know, for me, this this is decent out of the bottle. So it's like, it's not, well, if this is your favourite beer, I don't think you need to go and buy a perfect draft for this beer because it, it's, it's holding up really well in the bottle, I've got to be honest. In fact, I'm going to say it's more flavoursome. It's more citrusy. I'm getting more of the malts. I don't know why, but I can only say what I'm tasting. A bit more of like a spice as well. It's definitely more intense for me. Out of the bottle. Whether that makes it better, I don't know. Because I do find it a bit easier to drink on the perfect draft. But more flavoursome out of the bottle. So it's uh, it's a bit of a toss up, you know. Because um, the, the, the fact there's a bit less flavour and a, and a smoother mouth on the perfect draft is making it more smashable. You can probably tell by how aggressively I went in with the perfect draft one. So it's, but it's more flavoursome out of the bottle. It's going back again, just to confirm, yeah. But, to be honest, I think it might be a, a temperature thing. It's been in the fridge, but I feel like this is not three degrees, like it is on the perfect draft. I feel like this is about five. So it could just be a temperature thing, but however, I don't particularly think it's worth buying a perfect draft if you're a fan of this beer. Just buy the bottle and save yourself a couple of hundred quid on the machine. Um, and they're, they're pretty much the same price if you can get 20% off. But again, I'd buy it again if it is discounted. But is it better? I'm going to call it a draw. But they are different. Absolutely for me. Perfect draft definitely wins on the body and how easy to drink it is, but it just don't win on the flavour. Just the mouth means a lot to me though on a perfect draft. So yeah, I'm gonna call it a tire. Both good options if you like the beer. If you don't like the beer, then they'll both be shit options, wouldn't they? Thanks for watching guys. Bottle eight out of ten as well. Just no, it's just a, a good beer. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, do appreciate every single one of you that tune into my videos. What an awesome little community of people we're building here, and um, particularly enjoying the lives and all that as well. So, uh, <clears throat> pardon me. Till next one, people. Hit the like button. Consider subscribing if you're not done already. And bye, bye, darlings. Bye.